And and that was at the very end of the book. Do you the mean book. there will and be no sexual there will be part no, to their relationship? I, I can't even answer it quite that way or I will give away something. Okay. But she will never get what it was that she has always wanted. And she is a young, healthy, vibrant woman who is an extremely loving woman. Okay. And I was very, very disappointed, very disappointed. Um, I think That's very interesting. It is. And, and I think part of the appeal of romance fiction is, let's face it, the woman wins. That's the whole idea. She gets the whole kit and caboodle. Oh, yeah. The wonderful man and yep. the relationship. and the, the tough guy who is now a softer yes, tough guy. Absolutely. The whole thing, yes. Well, you know, speaking of happily ever after, how has that changed in the industry over the years? Uh, it's gone from, oh, if you're, go first of all, it's gone from if you're going to have sex with this guy, you better marry him by the end of the book. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's something that, that was gone in our society long before it was set aside in romance fiction. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's gone beyond that. I think that, that we no longer take the approach, and when I say we, I mean women, mm -hmm. no longer take the approach that, that the only happiness is the happily ever after in marriage. Um, and I think that's what's changed, that there can be happiness perhaps without marriage, there can be happiness just in being with, with the man that you love. I don't think that it's changed um, drastically because basically I think at the end the happily ever after still involves fidelity. Fidelity, yes. And, and I think that's an important factor. I as a writer would not change that factor in my, my own books. Well, let's get personal here for a minute. Um, I've been married 28 years to one man who is on the crew. Mm -hmm. And you've been married for Longer a long that. time yes. to one man, and you met him when you were quite young. Fifteen. 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 And, he was and I always hasten to add, I was in my senior year in high school. I don't know why that makes it better, but, you know, when I say fifteen, people sometimes go, oh my gosh, yeah, right, freshman or know, something. Right, right. Were you in elementary school? <laughs> but, um, I was a senior, and he was eighteen, and it's a long story, which I won't go into, but suffice it to say that if you're going to meet a guy who's older and who has just graduated from high school, it's really a mistake to tell him that you are, well, I didn't lie about my age, but I didn't tell him how old I was either. And therefore, when, when it came time for, my mother wanted to make me a very traditional birthday party when I was 16. Oh. And when it came time to tell him that he was going to come to that party, and to explain why I was having a sweet 16 <laughs> party, it, it was, it was an interesting hard. moment. Yeah. Oh, I bet. But it, I mean, we, it's a wonderful thing to meet someone and love him from such an early age on. Mm -hmm. but, but the point, I guess my point is that you and I both, and, and I know the other two women who are on our crew, they also have long-standing yes. marriages, long-standing yes. relationships. So, and I, uh, because I, I used to hear people say sometimes, oh, the women who are frustrated are reading romance. Oh, uh, no. No, no, quite. No, no, I hear, f in fact, when my readers tell me things about them, their, their personal lives, which they do mm -hmm. very often, um, many of them, many of them tell me that they are happily married. Yeah. And these books are just, I mean, they love to read. They love the world that I create, uh, that writers create for them. And I think that's the whole key to success. I think so, too. Sandra, I'm going to switch gears here for a minute because a lot of the people who do watch page one are writers. And I'm always looking for a little advice to pass along to them or a little glimpse into that world of the writer. So let me ask you one of those tough questions, not where did you get your ideas, because we all always oh, get that one. Yes. But writer's block. Have you ever suffered writer's block? I have. I have suffered writer's block. Um, it was not, I suffered it twice, and once was really very difficult, and it, I worked my way through that by finally realizing that it was a problem that I was having with uh, with an editor who had problems of her own. And that's a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. But I, I did once, simply, I was working and I suddenly remember working on a book and suddenly began to think about the future. And I really realized that there was nothing in my head, so I thought. And as you know, Zita, that's a terrifying oh, feeling yes. for a writer. Yes. Um, and I, I really tried what I thought was the right approach. You know, I worked on what I was doing during the day, one book. And in the evenings, I sat hunched over my computer coming up with ideas, and they weren't really good ideas. And finally, I took the advice that I had probably heard others give but ignored, 
which was I set the whole issue aside. I stopped thinking about it. I just mentally walked away from it. And, and the block went away. I think writer's block, it can be caused by a lot of things. And some of them, of course, are, are not easy to get mm -hmm. past. But I think it can also be caused for many writers by that simple kind of anxiety, this little voice inside you that says, OK, but what are you going to do for your next book? Oh, yeah. The best thing, I think, is just not to think about it. I mean, I know that sounds like I'm saying avoid the, the subject. I'm not. I'm just saying don't, don't dwell on it. Don't concentrate on it. OK, good advice. I want to go back to something you mentioned a minute ago about you, you referred to your, uh, an editor. You've had, OK, this is the 75th book. Mm -hmm. After 75 books, do you need an editor? You what, do. OK, for, for what? what? What does an editor do for you now? It's an, another pair of experienced eyes. It's someone who, who loves your work. I mean, I don't think it's possible. I would not be happy working with an editor who didn't really love what I do. Oh, that yeah, would be, be hard. horrible. But, but loves your work in a, um, a way that is that does not keep her from seeing if it has any possibility of improvement. I, I don't think of an editor as someone who reads my work and thinks, oh, this, this isn't good. Fortunately, I, I've never had that happen. Um, I think of an editor as someone who says, this is good. Let's talk about what could make it even better. And I okay. think that that's the value of an editor. Are, are you a member of any kind of a critique group? or I am not. I never, I've never worked with a critique group. Um, the only person who reads my stuff before my editor is my husband, who started doing that when I had after maybe my fifth or sixth book. And uh, he read it because the book involved a lot of issues that I needed to have researched. Mm -hmm. And I asked him to do that for me. And then we just evolved into a very How easy perfect. pattern. How nice to have the yes. reader write in-house. Oh, yeah. Well, Sandra, thanks very, very much for being on the show and sharing this information with us tonight. And I know readers in the audience, I know all you romance readers are going to go out and grab the books. But I think you'll maybe pick up some other fans as well. Um, Thank also, you, Rick. This has been just lovely. Zita. Good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. And uh, I also want to say a thank you to my crew. And to you in the viewing audience, please remember the words of Ursula again. There have been civilizations that did not use the wheel, but there have been no civilizations that did not tell stories. Find your story and find a way to tell it. And join us again next time. Thank you.